this is a car museum I'm not sure what it's called yet but it's just near the Kentucky Ohio state line in Kentucky just off I-75 we'll get some more info as we can I'll do some videoing while you're... This Auburn is beautiful. Look at the color. 58 Packard Hawk convertible with a supercharger. Now here's a rare car. And you can just pause on those to see the let's see how it's got a pillarless door like the nomad the 55 6 and 7 nomad while well, a Pontiac had a safari that used the same roof lining glass what a beautiful car everything here is restored there won't be too many muscle cars, so if you're looking for muscle cars, you may have to look elsewhere. Sounds like it's raining out pretty good right now. Now there's a ton of cars here, so I'm not going to video every single one of them, so sorry. these cars. I'd love to have one. Lucky there, there's even an American graffiti car. Another 58 Impala. Neighbor of mine growing up had a white one with a green interior. Dodge truck, 1938 half ton, a Ford 48 Ford next to it. Thirty one Plymouth Roadster. Pierce Arrow. Wow. Here's the back of that Packard with this supercharger on it. That's the way the hood should be on a 35.
dashboard's the same as in the one and a half ton. Look at this, and they're even using it as a pickup. That's awesome. This is like the Pierce that was in that barn. I rented a barn and there was a Pierce in it and the guy said I could have it if I got it out of there, but I would have need to have made too many hand make too many parts for the drivetrain was in the back all disassembled and literally in bushel baskets. And you're not going to go buy a part for a Pierce. If you need a part for it, you're going to have to hand make it. This is air-cooled. Franklin's were air-cooled cars. I think Jonathan W. has a Franklin. Yeah, it's a car worth restoring the one he has, too. See a little bit of the engine in there? I can see it. I don't know if you can or not. This is not a real one. You can see it's got a garden tractor transmission. And it's probably got a lawnmower engine sitting underneath here. Vertical shaft, probably eight or ten horse. Oh wow, this is super cool. International Harvester. engine
see something strange about that uh, coming up? This one? Yeah. The, the roof. Looks like it's been shortened up, the car. Like the door, this door, looks like it's been removed. <laughs> it's a concept car. The okay. Two of them built. Two the of other them? one was destroyed in a fire, so this is the only remaining one in the, in the world. Really? But uh, yeah, but back when they built this, they were looking at, well, let's compete with the Thunderbird. So they shortened the wheelbase and they, they made it a coupe. <laughs> Super neat. Decided not to go ahead with that. Uh oh, it's got a leaky fuel pump. Oh, okay. <laughs> Even though that these cars are licensed and whatever, it's a constant. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> Even if you own one car, it's a constant battle to keep them going. Big old Imperial. I remember when everyone wanted these for the Derby because they're such tanks. Fifty-three or four Mercury. Okay, but this one here is different. The the four? Yeah. No. Canadian. Okay. My Canadian viewers. That's a good looking front end on it. One of my videos, Cruising Woodward, I had a guy retract that was a black one too. He retracted and put the top and took it down for me. Another 58 Impala. Peerless. Shoot. 
Chevrolet. It says it's an international Landau convertible. like that that would be fun to cruise around in <laughs> like that? i do i assume it's, it has the flathead v8 in it still mm -hmm. studebaker this Cadillac. Okay, now I'm going to say this is what that pierce is a big tub like this. So. Well, the headlights are formed into the fender. What a neat vehicle. Hudson. I'll give you a little read here and there. All right, there's a lot of museum here, and I want to get home tonight, so I'm going to kind of go through some other areas quick here. And when he built all this front part on, this part back here is actually the factory. This back here was actually. Like a Crosley Jeep.
where is the teletouch? It's actually a three on the tree. There's the lever and the pedals. That's why it does not have teletouch. And they do have a 60. City didn't think they had a 59. I can see a 71 Ford also. Got a power glide in it. You can see the dash in the 59 and 60 were basically the same thing. This is a 283 powered car because it has the the V, it would just be that with the six, the V, that with the V for the 283 and the V in the cross flags for the 348. We're gonna get some of these Studebakers too. Lincoln Zephyr. We'll get this one. Look at these tail lights. Aren't they awesome? And then of course the Lincoln again. It has clamshell headlights. The guy was telling me the 58 that was in the other room there, the black one, is the only car he will not sell. This looks like a Bel Air here in the interior. Yeah, it is. Bel Air four-door sedan. It's got a power glide automatic. Look at the seat upholstery. Yeah, that's pretty neat. A little smash, even. It's a 1950 Nash. And of course, we got a Packard four door here. Fifty-nine Ed Solaire, the turquoise one. Looks like a 60 Buick. Oh, yeah. Now, see, that's a new. Now, 67 Chevy over here, we'll go check out. 59 T Bird. Yes, yeah. Yeah, it's. Where are you guys from? Now, was she on down like the Rod Road in Sabina? I was near four lights. I like the dash of the 65 better than the 64 or the 66 or the 68. And 67 just has a nice looking dash. And the 71 Ford. It's a convertible. You don't see a lot of the 71s and 2s. They ride it out on the showroom floor. My dad had a 72 Country Square that's still around. Dash is the same in the 71 and 2. It says Air AM FM Stereo. The grill part is different here in the 71 and 2, and then the bumper has a little bit more grill air on the 72. This is the workshop. Hmm. 
like that. There isn't going to be any info on these cars, I don't think, because this is all where they work on the vehicles. I like that Lincoln. I love these these style of Lincolns. This Diamond T truck. This is a 71, I'm going to guess. I would take, yeah, 71. I'd take one of these in a heartbeat. It's really dark where this car is sitting. There's another vehicle sitting right on top of it. So, looks like somebody put too long of a stud in the air cleaner. Square body Chevy sitting above this Packard. It's in pretty good shape for what it is. Those things rotted out on the showroom floor, too. 69 Bonneville. It's even a convert. Packard. This is a woody wagon. As you can see, it's even got some cargo in it. Reflecting this truck off of it. It's a 39 Diamond T. This has had some cast iron repairs done to that big old four cylinder. It says it's a Kelly, Kelly Springfield. They made tires. What a neat truck, that'd be fun to drive. All those hard, hard rubber. Little size of the rear tires. big differential looks like it has two gearboxes yep well maybe not maybe high and low you don't see these jeep fc's very much these things are just super neat four-wheel drive so you can read the whole sign. There's another FC Jeep. Federal fire truck. 50, 54, 55, 55. My friend Dave with all the old cars when we were in high school had a 54. He restored in his backyard with his dad. Yeah, it's kind of neat seeing it. I think Dave will appreciate seeing it. 68 has the marker light, 67 did not. That Jeep FC there. I think these are, yeah, four wheel drive. This Piercero truck, holy mackerel. Wow. 
This is one of my favorite things here. Oh my God, is this thing cool. I can't see in there, that's too high for me. But I can show you guys. It says it has a V8 in it. Sixty Oldsmobile. Looks like a four-door sedan. I like the Olds. Sixty Pontiac and sixty Olds. I like better than the fifty-nine Pontiac or fifty-nine Olds. Yeah, they're neat cars. It's like the base model because it doesn't have any stainless. So it'd be like the equivalent of the Biscayne and the. Chevrolet division. A Marlin. Yeah, th these are cars you just don't see. I mean, you see Camaros and Corvettes and stuff. When was the last time you saw a Marlin? You know, I saw one on the Dream Cruise last year. One. I remember these, a neighbor had one. It's got a Cor yeah, Corvair engine right here, flat six. This one has two side drafts, or down drafts I should say. Very simple. There you go. Mobile. All right, let's go check out some other parts of the museum here. I've changed my battery, it's about dead. It's chilly in here. Just put some car quarter panels on the side of a pickup truck. K 
Cadillac. Packard truck. Lincoln Cosmopolitan. Another Jeep FC. That's a six to two. Alright, let's get back to the other part. I think I showed everything else here. I think it's my, my favorite shoebox Ford is the 51. Solely because I was almost born in the front seat of one of these. Almost came out right there. <laughs> Check out the train display too.
that 38 Ford I frame off, I had to send all the dash out to have it all re-wood grained. Oh, really? Yeah. That looks really nice. Got to walk through here. <laughs> like the Phaetons. Chrysler, 28 Buick, 12 Maxwell, 28 Dodge Brothers, Thirty-three Master Deluxe. That would have the old stove bolt in line six. I think in thirty-three there are two hundred and six cubic inch. I think. I like the colors on it too. When you always see the Fords of the Sarah, you rarely see the Chevys of the Sarah. That's why I kind of like the 20s and 30s. The um, Maxwell 1915, 25 Maxwell, 13 Buick. I wonder if this thing's original. See what this says. Doesn't say it's unrestored or not. Twenty nine Chevrolet sedan. Twenty nine Ford sedan. Well, two door. I guess they're both two door. So there you can see the twenty nine Chevy. A 29 Ford. I wonder if everyone in 1929 complained. All the cars look alike that you can't tell them apart. They all look the same. You can't tell a Chevy from a Ford or 30, 29 from a 28 or a 30. <laughs> like people complain nowadays about the cars. I suspect, you know, they did. <laughs> I think people have always been the same. Let's go and see what's out. Uh, this is called a center door, as you can see. Isn't this what uh, Baby Jane, the movie Baby Jane, isn't this what they drove? 46 Lincoln Zephyr convertible. Yeah, I think this is the baby, the same as the Baby Jane car from Hitchcock's movie there. Unless it was a Continental, which it could have been. Pretty sure it was a 46 Lincoln, though. Shows 95,000 miles on the clock. You know, for this era, that's high mileage. You know, they had pretty poor air filters and pretty poor oil filters and poor lubrication, soft valves. 100,000 miles in this era was a lot of miles.
like this Air Ford really well. Love to have one of these. Cool Studebaker Lark. Yeah, the light is what cushioned the valves. So they went slam metal to metal, add a little coating of lead in between the surfaces. And that caused a lot of carbon buildup, and that's why I had change plugs, and you know, and they had points back then, you know, which were always in need of cleaning a Corsair. This is the more of the top, towards the top of the line of Edsel. I think the Citation, correct me if I'm wrong, Corsair and the Citation were the top and the Ranger and the Pacer were the lower models. We got a 65 Ford in here. DeLorean. The 65 and 66 dash was just pretty much all identical. This has got AC. Somebody's added AC to it. I wonder where they put the condenser. Air-cooled engine, so there's no radiator replaced with the condenser in the front. Yeah, I'd like to have one of these too. Look at that thing. Ooh, look at the dashboard. You got a radio in it. And it's a manual. Yeah, it kind of looks DeLorean-like. 
His other car that he was known for was the Chevy Vega. Yeah, and the problem was, was that was the window right there, so you didn't get much air ventilation in them. I don't know if I got this car or not. I kind of want to. As far as the Buicks go, I do like the 59 better than the 60, but the Pontiac and the Olds, I like the 60 better. Just my preference. You know, everyone has their likes in the world. I just really like the Sudsel. And this Packard. Look at the hood ornament on this. Give it some perspective. Looks like it has a hydromatic in it. Power brakes. Be sure it has power steering. It's a Packard. Of course it's going to have those goodies. This is a 56 we're looking at right now. It's got a 3 on the floor. This would be the last year they used the 235 straight six in these. There's the side drafts. Dual outlet exhaust. does not have the tack drive on the back of the generator. Does have a tachometer. Maybe they can't find the correct generator or maybe it's driven some other way. All right. 70. 69. My shop teacher had a 69. He crashed it and busted up a fender. He told me if I repaired it for him, I'd have an A in the class, so I did. I think he was drunk. 68, when he hit, when he crashed his 69. But I did get an A. Ramjet fuel injection here. Well, they covered the distributor and wires and everything neatly in the Corvette. It shows 38,000 miles. I wonder if that's original. I bet it is. It's got a four speed manual.
So the guy, this is a private collection, and the guy that owns this collection, apparently that's the only car in this collection that is not for sale. It's a 348 Tri-Power. I think I recorded this. But you can pause it real quick. But anyway, anything else in here, you'd probably part with. Just attach to this like I'm attached to my Bel Air. I think I might have videoed these. There's so many cars here. I don't know what I videoed and what I didn't. All right, we're going to call it a day at this museum. worth of it is that I'll put the info on it in the description. This is just one of four rooms of cars. First one, actually. <laughs>